it's been a long time since I sat down and talked about Fate. <sighs> Fate Khalid Season 3 is finally here. I'm glad to see it back. I'm really glad to see this series back because I've been reading the visual novel. I've been reading the fate route and stuff, and it's kind of been upsetting not being able to, you know, talk about fate recently because, I mean, I was so used to coming week after week, watching fate stay not talking about it, that it became a tradition. Like, you know, just a weekly thing I, I had a lot of fun doing, and then it was gone like that. And I'm glad Fate Khalid is here for I can at the very least talk about Fate once again every Friday. So, before I even begin my first impressions slash review of Fate Khalid Season 3 Episode 1, I want to talk about something because I know a lot of Chibits are going to ask this question because since I reviewed Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, I know a bunch of Cheapits are going to see the title of this video and see the name of this anime, and they're going to be like, Fate Khalid, what the fuck is this? I, I know a bunch of Cheapits are going to ask that, because they're going to look at this and they're like, what is this? Can I start it? Can I watch this? You know, so many are going to ask that. And so, today I'm going to kind of do a brief, I guess, summary of what Fate Khalid is about before I dive into the first impressions review, because I'm just going to answer those questions right here, right now, because there's going to be so many Chibits that are going to ask, coming from Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blayworks, asking me what this is and can they start it. So, Fate Khalid is a spin-off Magical Girl series. Just because I said that does not mean you should not watch this. This series, of course, is not going to be for everyone. If you're not a fan of Ilya, if you don't want to find out more about Ilya, and you don't really care about the characters from Fate Stay Night, you might not like this. But, characters from Fate Zero and Fate Stay Night do take place in this world. For instance, there is Fate Stay Night characters and Fate Zero characters, like Kuritsugu. We don't get to see Kuritsugu much, we've only seen him briefly, but Kuritsugu is also in this series. And, you know, Emiya Shiro is also in it, Rin... Luvia, Ilya, the maids from Ilya, you know, when they got killed from Fate Stay Night Unl Unlimited Blade Works, when they got, you know, killed by Gil. Well, they're also in this, and pretty much if you want to start the series, personally, you could kind of start this without seeing any Fate series, personally to me, any anime Fate series, but if you do want to know about these characters a little bit more and understand what, you know, these characters are about, I do recommend watching Fate Stay Not Unlimited Blade Works and watching Fate Zero. I recommend watching those two because then you'll have a better understanding of some of these characters that are reoccurring characters in, you know, Fate Stay Not or Fate Zero. And if you want to understand them better and understand the characterization, it would kind of be better if you already watched those beforehand because this verse, this, you know, series takes place in the Fate Stay Night timeline. And like I said, this is kind of considered the Ilya route, if you get my drift. So... Like I said, if you want to start it, this is season three. Do not start this episode. You got to watch the first two seasons that are already out. This is season three I'm currently reviewing. So now that I've clarified that, I'm going to be getting into some spoiler territory. So now I'm going to get into that. So I've noticed quite a bit of things I did not notice before about Fate Khalid. I I'm quite shocked, actually, because after reading... Fate Stay Not Visual Novel, after starting to read it, and I'm reading into it right now, and after finishing Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, you know, the anime, and then watching Karno Kyokai, and then Fate Zero, I'm seeing things in Fate Khalid I never realized beforehand, when, you know, I first reviewed this series for Season 2 and Season 1, I'm starting to notice things that stick out. For me, that has watched a lot of these Type Moon series, I'm starting to notice things I never would have noticed. And... It's quite shocking. It allows you to really enjoy Fate Khalid a little bit more, I think. Because now seeing what I see now after finishing, you know, recently Fate Stay Not Un Unlimited Blade Works, I'm able to see some things from this series that I didn't actually have a good grasp on. Especially when it comes down to the cards, to the kissing, to the mana transfer, to some of the things when it comes to the magic, projection magic, and, you know, other little details all throughout the series. I, I never realized this or ever thought about it until after seeing the visual novel and then, you know, the anime. I never thought about these details. And it allows me to appreciate Fate Khalid a little bit more. So, Fate Khalid. One thing I have to say is I'm glad to see it back because I miss my Ilya. 
I, I really miss my Ilya. She was one of my favorite characters. She is one of my favorite characters from Fate. I mean, I, I loved it when she was, you know, with Berserker going fucking crazy. I mean, that, that was a crazy segment in Fate Stay Night. I was really upset how she didn't have much as a big, big, massive role in the anime. I'm, you know, reading the visual novel now, and I'm glad she has a little bit more of a role. I was just, you know, slightly upset that she didn't have her own route because she was a cool character. I want to know a lot more about her, and I'm glad that, you know, this series is here for we can have Ilya more as the main character, which is very odd and weird, which I want to talk about. It's just, it's very weird coming to this series and watching Fate Khalid and then seeing Ilya as a main character when for the past couple months when I was, you know, talking about Fate Stay Night and watching it, Emi Ashiro was the MC, and so was Rin. It, it feels so weird seeing, like, Emi Ashiro pushed to the side as, like, a side character in this. Like, it feels so weird because when you get used to this certain character as, like, a main, and when you switch over to this other series and he's no longer the main character and you have this other character that was a, a support character, a side character, and the previous series now the main character, it's just, it's very weird. It really is fucking weird. And that's kind of what I feel right now because... Now knowing a lot more about Emi Ashiro and, you know, Projection, Hero of Justice, Archer, so many little details like this, and then seeing, you know, this now of how he's like he is and, you know, kind of pushed to the side, it's just, it's weird. It, I, I can't get over that. And <sighs> the little details, man, just the little details. Oh, yeah, one thing I did not expect from this is Issei. Like, that's one thing I did not expect. Like, Issei is going to be making an appearance most likely next week. And I'm excited for that because Issei is the type of character that didn't really have much of the spotlight. And he was kind of just there and to be there in the anime, which kind of saying I liked his character. I liked his design. I thought he would have been a lot more important in the anime from what I saw. And he really wasn't. And... I'm glad he's going to be once again making a reappearance in Fate Khalid. Like, he's going to be making an appearance sometime next week on the Beach episode, and we're going to get to see a lot more of Shiro. Which leads into something I want to ask now, after really thinking about the events of all the Fate series and reading the visual novel and stuff. This does contain spoilers. I'm just going to say right now, okay? Th this, these reviews are going to contain spoilers, because if I notice something, I'm going to obviously try to dive in into further detail and to explain some of these events and also talk about in Fury Craft. So, of course, this is going to contain spoilers. Okay. So, as we know, Shiro. Shiro wanted to be the hero of justice, okay? He wanted to be the hero of justice in his route in Fate Stay Night. He wanted to be the hero of justice, and as we know, he got his goal, his objective, to be a hero of justice from Kuritsugu. Kuritsugu is still alive in Fate Clay. He's still alive. So the question here I have right now, does Emi Ashiro, in this dimension, this verse, have the will to become the Hero of Justice? Like, did... Did Kuritsugu hand that down to Shiro? Or did he never get it? That's something I'm, I'm curious about, because... If Kuritsugu isn't dead, and he never broke down to give Shiro his his mantle of, you know, wanting to be a hero of justice, is Shiro studying magic? Projection magic? Is he, you know, wanting to become a hero of justice? I mean, a lot of questions now thinking about it, because as we know from more of the world building we got from the previous Fate series, every dimension of Fate is connected. Everything is connected. There, there's different dimensions, different type of dimensions that the Counterforce can come into and mess with. For instance, Archer could go to many different dimensions, even dimensions that have his own self, and he can interfere with this and save humanity. Well, is the Counterforce still have a role in this dimension? Like, is the Counterforce here? Like, is could we consider the Counterforce here? It could Archer, like, appear and could, you know, Shiro use his projection magic, because he even studying projection magic, because I don't think we have seen Shiro through season one or season two even use projection magic, or any magic. I don't think we have. Of course, this is Ilya's route, so he needs to focus on Ilya, but I wonder. I really wonder. I really do. Because if he never got the Hero of Justice mantle from Kuritsugu, who gave it to him? Did he get it in a different way? Is he not going to become one? A lot of questions. A lot of questions, if you get my drift. So, how to discuss this? How to discuss this? Um, okay, so, uh, to the the kissing scene, that, that's something I want to talk about now, because I know a bunch 
of people are going to look at that scene as sexual, which I think that's what the anime staff Silverlink was going for. But after reading the visual novel and then getting information at the end of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, I now know that the kissing or sexual intercourse is able to transfer mana to others. That's how they transfer magic between others. And that was kind of explained already in Fate Khalid. Kuro gets, you know, mana from kissing Ilya. And so, it's not really a sexual act, it's just made to look sexual. That's kind of what it is. And I just overlook it, and I'm like, okay, just Yuri, just, just Yuri. And then, that's it, said and done. I mean, Kuro needs her magic. If she doesn't, you know, she'll disappear. And we do know Kuro is the embodiment of Archer, actually, if you think about it. Because, you know, she has Ar Ar Archer's attire, like, you know, she has his outfit, and also she can, you know, transform into his clothing... And also, we do know that she has some of the magic that Archer uses. I wonder, I really wonder, can Archer also come into this world from a different way? Or is it said and done, it's already too late since technically Ilya has Kuro using the Archer card. But... Getting back into other points, the main premise that Season 2 set up was the 8th card. And that's where this season is going towards. That's the direction this season of Fate Khalid is going towards. It's going towards this 8th card that was introduced right towards the end. And I remember at the end of the Season 2, I, I, I remember in the finale, my final review of Season 2, I remember I said and theorized... That, like, we've seen all the individual servant class cards. Like, we've seen, you know, Archer, to Saber, so many different cards. You know, all heroic spirits, we've seen them. And I remember I said, like, I theorized, like, if there's an eighth card, and thinking about all the heroic spirits, the only one left would most likely be Gil. Since this does take place in the Fate Stay Night verse, you know, that timeline, I remember I theorized that most likely this eighth card is Gilgamesh. And if it is Gilgamesh... I hope he has the same voice actor. I really hope he does have the same voice actor. If it is Gil. If it is Gil, I hope he still has that attitude, that, that stuck-up fucking attitude in, you know, his same voice actor. I, I really do, because I miss my boy Gil. Even though I hate to love him, like, I, I hate that I love him so much as a character, I, I I'm hope he does come back, because he's a cool character, and I, I do hope he makes a reappearance in Fate Khalid, and this voice actor stays the same, for we can hear more of his badass lines. I hope he says mongrel and all that. that that'd be great. That'd be, that'd be fucking great. So, yeah, I, I think majority of Season 3 is going to be focusing around the 8th card and also Miyu. Now, Miyu is the segment I want to talk about right now. From the opening song of what we got, there was brief hints in the opening song that felt like it spoiled me. The opening song felt like it spoiled me. It really did because there was some shackles we saw and it looked like Miyu was shackled and from what I can get from that scene it seemed like Miyu was a slave at one point and it's kind of fucked up right there like Miyu was once a slave I wonder wonder what happened like what happened what is really Miyu's past because if you think about it we don't know much about Miyu at all we don't we don't know nothing like next to nothing of Miyu and I hope this season focuses on her because judging from the opening song that we got this season it looks like Miyu might be one of the main spotlights and we also see Bazette. I think her name's Bazette. I, I forget the exact um I know it starts to be I think it's Bazette. you know the girl that beat the fucking shit out of Ren and stuff in the last season you know beaten with a fist had a noble phantasm was a human I'm like whoa what the fuck and you know I, I know after a clarification from fellow Chibits in the last season that she supposedly is from the timeline after Fate Stay Night. Like, she has a major role after Fate Stay Night. And so, what game is she from? Is she from Fate Apothecaria or Fate Extra? I, I forget. I, I don't know. I don't know what game Bazette is from. But, however, I do hope she has another role in this season because she was so badass. Oh my god, she was so fucking badass in last season. Just coming in, wrecking everybody like it was nothing. Like, I, I remember that butler. Remember, uh, Rin's butler and Luvia's butler, you know, when they were, you know, fighting in the mansion? That was fucking crazy. Like, you remember that? When the butler just comes out with guns and shit fighting? Oh, that was just, oh god, dude, that was good. But, yeah. 
this season is already setting up to be something very good, especially with, you know, the safe chord to get to see Bazette in the opening, to Mew most likely with some shackles or something like that, to Kuro trying to get mana because, you know, more awkward situations we need, and a lot of other questions I still have about Shiro, to Kuritsugu, the Hero of Justice, to the Counter Force. A lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. But for now, let's talk about the production. So, as per usual when it comes to Silverlink, they usually put some good budget into Fate Clue. They usually do have some good quality animation and art, and for the most part, it's the standard art, Moe art style and stuff we've gotten to know and love from Fate Khalid. It doesn't seem to be necessarily any different compared to the previous season. I mean, it does look a little bit polished compared to previous seasons, but it doesn't look that different at all. And usually first episodes, though, have the best budget put into them. But necessarily, since this is season three, I don't think Silverlink really needs to demonstrate the best budget in the first episode of Season 3, because if you're this far into the series, I don't think they necessarily need to put the best budget into the first episode, because if you've watched this far, you should know what to expect from this series. And so, I guess that argument's kind of invalid for long-running anime series, like, you know, with Season 2s and Season 3s, because you know what to expect. Now, other things to talk about, mm, I guess that's about it. I think that is about it. I mean, opening ending song, very good. I like the music, of course. And, yeah, that's about it. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.